conductivity and uh, transmittivity affects the flat plate collector then number of covers we discussed we discussed about spacing between the covers up to what distance of uh, uh, two different covers can be kept so that maximum uh, re radiation or the reflection is possible between the covers and it can absorb more heat from the solar radiation then we talked about the tilt of the collector then we discussed about incident radiation inlet fluid temperature uh, to overcome the stagnation temperature so on one more thing about the stagnation temperature is say for example whenever there is no radiation also on the flat plate collector in the cloudy days or something there also the heating will not be taking place so when heating is not taking place the fluid inside the flat plate collector cannot flow or cannot have the a natural flow or the thermosiphon flow so that type of conditions are called as temperature stagnation and one more condition we discussed yesterday is when both the inlet and outlet temperatures are same even then also the hot liquid or the cold liquid we cannot differentiate where there is no flow of the fluid because of the no change in the temperature that is also called as a temperature stagnation third condition is say for example if the solar radiation can uh, provide for the flat plate collector up to 100 degree centigrade now say for example one flat plate collector without utilizing the hot water or the cold water from the overhead tank it has already achieved maximum temperature of the given flat plate collector in such case also even if you supply the solar radiations continuously without using any hot water then also the in inlet and outlet temperatures or the overhead tank temperature all these fluid temperatures in any given point will be having maximum temperature that is 100 degree centigrade then also it is also called as temperature stagnation so whenever temperature stagnation is there the working of this flat plate collector ceases so whenever you maintain some temperature difference between these inlet and outlet of the fluid uh, temperature then only this uh, absorption of the or the useful heat gain from the solar energy is possible okay then last point we discussed about the dust collection on the cover plate now coming to the other part of the syllabus so we'll just go back to the syllabus once again so in the syllabus we have general description of the flat plate collector collector geometry we discussed selective surfaces we discussed balance equation also we have discussed in the theory stagnation temperature okay done Uh, now coming to this transmittivity of the cover absorptivity product or uh, some examples will take if possible so uh, many books or references if you see the numericals are very difficult because here only expressions to be provided or the correlations to be provided without any derivation so without any derivation means it is very difficult to go for the problem because in between steps whenever it is required we cannot take directly for the numericals without discussing okay so better what i'll do is i will take the equations of this all the parameters like transmittivity absorptivity efficiency or the heat removal factor or the losses of uh, flat plate collector between bottom side uh, side wall and the top side and depending upon that we'll choose uh, one or two numericals then later we'll come to uh, later we have to discuss about photovoltaic conversion now coming to the self learning topic so in this self learning topic we need to discuss about applications of solar energy for power generation heating cooling purpose distillation energy storage with layers so this is the very big part which is covered in the self learning topic so today what we'll do is briefly i will discuss what self study to be done in this uh, very vast uh, topic of uh, solar energy for conversions because if you talk about only heating so this is also having many applications even cooling also cooling and heating if you take it is not only the water we are using it for a building heating and cooling applications for industrial applications okay so n number of applications are possible with respect to this heating and cooling so i will take those examples and shortly we'll discuss briefly with all these self learning topics and from monday what we'll do is we'll take these uh, equations and the numerical examples of a flat plate collector 
ओके कमिंग टू हियर डिफरेंट एप्लीकेशन ऑफ द सोलर एनर्जी वन इज द डायरेक्ट थर्मल एप्लीकेशन दैट इज हीटिंग और कूलिंग एप्लीकेशन सो एज आई टोल्ड यू वॉटर हीटिंग स्पेस हीटिंग ऑफ द बिल्डिंग और फॉर द एग्रीकल्चर और इंडस्ट्रियल एप्लीकेशन वी नीड द डायरेक्ट थर्मल एप्लीकेशन एंड बिलो यू कैन सी द अदर थर्मल एप्लीकेशन दैट इज प्रोसेस हीटिंग द केमिकल इंडस्ट्रीज रेफ्रिजरेशन distillation furnace heating then electric power generation cooking and pumping so as per our syllabus we'll focus on power generation heating cooling distillation energy storages okay so even this is also having vast applications so solar thermal collectors as i discussed uh, before this uh, earlier classes we discussed about the different collectors like focusing non focusing line focusing point focusing flat plate collector okay uh, and with the different uh, arrangements like central tower parab paraboloid or the cylindrical type so like this we discussed earlier but we'll come to the application what is the use of this and how it works so coming to this type of uh, concentrating type so here in this you can see a parabolic object is kept here first one so later you can discuss with the self study whatever is uh, in detail required briefly i will tell you what is the working principle so in this parabolic type of cylindrical object we have the uh, throughout the length a cylindrical object is there like this and in the focal line which is the focal point of the parabolic structure here section of the cylinder i have taken the parabolic structure and at the focal point we are going to fix this pipe throughout the length and this is going to collect the radiation of the sun which is reflected from this mirrors okay so from this focus point or the focal point whatever the radiation is received here this is going to heat the liquid which is in the pipe and this hot liquid can exchange the heat with the applications but here we are discussing only about the working principle of these all things and if required you can remember the applications so this is about the cylindrical parabolic trough or the collector we can call it as so this you can simply draw a circular uh, sketch with a focal point and you can tell it is a cylindrical type if the length is more if there is no length we can call it as paraboloid so next is the fresnel lens collector where you can see this fresnel lens is focusing towards the solar radiations so once it receives the solar radiations the lens is designed such that all these radiations at the bottom side will be collected at a focal point or the focal line if it is a pipe we call it as a focal line all the radiations can be absorbed here and again we can going to heat the uh, liquid tube so again we can exchange the heat from this liquid tube so this type of lenses are called as fresnel lens which are going to collect the radiation and focus towards a focal point or the focal line and even we have the uh, fresnel lens in a circular manner also if it is a circular type it is called as fresnel tube of the fresnel uh, cylindrical tube inside which we are going to fix the pipe okay so one more type of uh, this focal line collector is or the focal point collector is also we can use the fixed mirrors like this on the land at a given uh, radial distances from the focal point and these fixed mirrors will act like a parabolic structure See here all the fixed mirrors small mirrors are kept in a given distances parabolic or a horizontal surface then these all mirrors are focused toward the focal point or the focal line 
and there we can absorb all the heat so like this different applications will be there to study about the solar thermal absorption i hope the concepts are very simple you can understand with respect to cylindrical parabolic structure or the collector one more is the mirror strip solar collector one more we discussed is the fresnel lens collector next again this is the called as a solar tower so here what is the application is at the top of this tower we are going to fix some uh, equipment which is going to absorb all the radiations which is required for the heat collection or you can take for the power generation also because the heat if process above 300 or 200, 250 degree centigrade we can convert that water into steam itself and we can run the turbines so that heat what it is required for the running the turbine or the steam generation that can be collected from this receiver which is kept at the tower at the top of the tower and at the bottom or the land if you can see number of mirrors can be kept here which are forming like a parabolic structure and these mirrors will reflect back all the solar radiations to a fixed point so at a given receiver point we are going to make sure that maximum solar radiations can be collected so that it can generate maximum heat so this type of example is called as a uh, solar tower with uh, heliostat heliostat is nothing but a mirror so one more example i told parabolite so dish like structure is will be there so once the solar radiations are received on the dish collector it will be reflected back to the absorber or for cooking purpose also you can place a cooking utensil here and you can go for the cooking applications so many of the applications we may not see in our uh, local areas but wherever the solar radiation is very high in such areas we can observe these applications and in between different decades if you see many of these solar applications have not used by the people because we had uh, fossil fuels at cheaper rate or different uh, energy sources at cheaper rate compared to the solar applications but in the coming days if you observe again the fossil fuels are going to deplete or the price of the fossil fuels is going to increase very high so in such situations again the people are concentrating on these uh, even high cost solar applications but they are for the long time or for the long usage so that's why we need to focus on these type of applications any doubts up to here okay next is as i told flat rate collector also you can modify and the same flat plate collector you can call it as modified focusing type flat plate collector using these reflectors so this is the inclined flat plate collector here and we have number of mirrors which are kept side by side and these all mirrors can focus the solar radiation towards flat plate collector so this is one of the modified type of the flat plate collector which is using uh, number of reflectors or the mirrors to increase the performance of the temperature of the flat plate collector that is one type the next one more type is the compound parabolic concentrator so on the right side you can observe again there is a absorber or a flat plate collector at the bottom but the mirrors the type of the mirror which are used here or the reflectors are used here which are in parabolic structure or the cur curvilinear structure so depending upon these design they are called as compound parabolic concentrators okay so these type of parabolic structures are arranged across the different sides of the flat plate collector or the absorber so depending upon this structure design which is very complicated they are calling it as compound parabolic concentrator you can see the solar radiation reflections they are coming and hitting the parabolic uh, 
mirrors or the reflectors and they are focusing towards the flat plate collector or the absorber <coughs> so for that heating applications if you see for the given low temperatures up to 100 degrees centigrade you can go for the flat plate collectors as shown here if the temperature requirements are very high you can go for the concentrating type or the paraboloidal type or evacuated tube collection above 100 degrees centigrade if you want you can go for other applications only the solar collector we are going to replace rest all system will be same so here in this system if you see it is a natural circulation solar water heater which is pressurized type pressurized means the water will be stored in a overhead tank above this flat plate collector see the distance here just to indicate the overhead tank is kept above the flat plate collector some distance is shown here and this overhead tank is completely insulated and if cold conditions are there you can go for the auxiliary heater so through the auxiliary heater if the solar heat is not possible we can heat it by auxiliary heating applications so this is will be there for all the water heating system in our homes one auxiliary heater will be there then whenever this hot water is utilized the cold water cold water will come to this tank and it will flow through the solar flat plate collector at the bottom and once the solar radiation is received on the flat plate collector it will heat the water and it will go up to the water head tank so here what happens is because of the thermosiphon principle or the change in the density of the liquid the high temperature low density liquid will go to the overhead tank then high density low temperature liquid or the cold water will come back to the flat plate collector at the bottom and this phi is nothing but the beta the inflation of the receiver or the uh, tilted surface okay so this is about the natural circulation there is no pump here if there is no pump or blower for air uh, heaters if any machines are not used then we are calling it as passive system so one more is the non pressurized water heating system natural circulation here what is the difference is the overhead tank can be kept any distance not uh, required to with the above with the flat plate collector it can be kept just below to the flat plate collector also the only thing to be ensured is it should be little bit higher than the lower side of the flat plate collector can observe here the overhead tank should be just above the lower side of the flat plate collector such that the cold water can enter to the flat plate collector at the bottom side natural circulation should occur with one way wall so one way wall why because if any time the water level is completely filled here and heating is not possible then what happens sometimes the little hot water also come back to the overhead tank so to overcome that difficulty they have implemented one one way check wall so flow is possible in only one direction towards flat plate collector so there is no mixing of hot and cold water so this becomes non pressurized circuit because we are not keeping the overhead tank very high so because of the pressure of water itself it will flow so here what is happening whenever solar radiations are collected and high temperature high pressure is generated then only the water will flow until that there will be low pressure in the circuit so again if required you can go for the auxiliary heater electrical heater so any time if solar system is not working you can directly heat the water from the electrical application okay this example you can self study that is the typical water heater which is used in our homes so next we will discuss what is force circulation so as you know we are going to use here pump for the liquids 
So whenever the overhead tank is required for the maximum quantity of water, say for example in thousand liters or the uh, very high volume of the water is required, in such conditions we cannot keep the storage tank at very high uh, distance. So in such cases, what we are doing, we are keeping this water storage tank at very low levels. Not necessary that flat plate of the collector should be below the water tank. It may be anywhere. Okay. So if you are using the pump or one way check valve and other things, so because of the pump application, we can keep the storage tank anywhere at the bottom side because of the high capacity. And the flat plate collector should be kept to the towards the solar radiations. So it may be on the floor or it may be above the roof, wherever it is required, you can keep. So because of this pump circulation, what will happen? We are going to take the water from the lower tanks and we can pump it to the flat plate collector at a required speed. And once it is heated, as I told you, the water tank can be below side. Naturally, it may flow or again, you can use a pump here to take the water from the flat plate collector and it can be stored in the thermal storage tank. Then to maintain this temperature, okay, if the temperature is very high at the uh, above side of the flat plate collector, it will send sand to the pump. If the temperature is not achieved as per our requirement or the given load, then what will happen? It will again recirculate the water in the flat plate collector. So in the flat plate collector, the high temperature water as coming up. So once it is reaching the required temperature, until that it will be recirculating in the flat plate collector to achieve the required temperature. So like that, some sensing devices you can use and you can run the pump. So directly it will switch on the pump with respect to required temperature and the water flow can be controlled. So this is one of the forced circulation without antifreeze liquid. So without antifreeze means we are using the water here. If it is working in zero degree or below zero degree centigrade, it may freeze. So that care is not taken here. So countries which are not having any lower temperatures, we can use this system. But for the countries with very cold conditions below zero also if it is going, then we have to go for antifreeze solutions. Now in the antifreeze solutions, we can go for either mixing water with the glycol or different uh, solutions of glycol which are like propylene glycol or one more is ethylene glycol. So this mixture will make an antifreeze solution. So in temperatures which are below zero or in minus conditions, this water which is mixed with the glycol mixtures cannot freeze. So it will be in a liquid condition and it can again flow in the circuit. And if it is using a pump to uh, pressurize the liquid flow, then it is called as force circulation. The same antifreeze solution, if it is used without pump, then it is called as natural circulation. So here you can observe, as we are using antifreeze solution, we cannot directly use this for the applications. So here what we have done, the antifreeze liquid is circulated in the flat plate collector. And it is exchanging the heat in the heat exchanger. So when heat exchanger is required, then you can use the water heating. So cold water is taken in the heat exchanger or in the thermal storage device. It will exchange the heat and it will come back to the applications. And even I told you in cold conditions, maximum solar energy is not possible. So throughout the day, sometimes it may be completely cold. So we don't have any solar radiations. Then you have to again use the auxiliary or the external power source to heat the water directly or if any one or two hours if the solar radiation is possible then we can get the natural uh, heat itself is that clear so just observe these two systems we'll go to the next uh, self-study topic
Any points you want to add? Okay. So next we'll take the space heating systems. So in the space heating system, here also you can go by natural circulation of the air. So there are different types of space heating. So just I'll take the examples here. Yes. Yes, in this example, you can just observe uh, for this given building. So, depending upon the solar path, the building is designed to get some uh, uh, sunshade in the summer. So, in the summer, you can see the yellow lines. So, solar path is in, the, in that incident direction. So, in that incident angle, in that incident angles, there is no solar rays passing through this home or the windows so that is the care taken here uh, such that the roof is designed to prepare some shade on the inside room and in winter if you see according to the solar path or the sun path the incident angle is very high so according to that incident angle they have designed to get the maximum solar radiations in winter or the cold conditions inside the home okay and wherever possible possibility is there, they have prepared the glazing here or the glass windows. At the top also you can see some window is there which is uh, open or through the glass you can pass through the uh, radiations. Okay, And these radiations will be absorbed. At the bottom you can see some uh, fluid is passing through the pipes. It can absorb the heat and it can store it in the given storage tank. So this is one part and another is automatically the air inside the room is also going to heat in the winter. Okay, so that is nothing but the space heating. So once the air is heated, it will rise up to the top or by using the fans in reverted conditions or the other fans which are which can suck the air from the building and it can throw it out if it is crossing the temperatures or the comfort temperatures if it is crossing. Or the very high temperatures of air, it can be taken out through this top window, and from the again bottom window, we can get the cold air. So, like this, we are going to have the passive heating of the building. Passive means we are not using any pumping devices. Similarly, the water heating is also taking place at the top. You can see the solar radiations are falling on the flat plate collectors. And that hot water is from the risers or the top side. It is collected in a storage tank. Again, it is taken to the flat plate collector. So either by this you can uh, store the energy or the get the hot energy, uh, heat energy, or from the ground also you can use the number of fluid passages with insulated uh, bottom. You can extract the heat from the solar energy in winters, and you can store the heat energy. So this type of space heating without using any fan or blower we can calling it as passive solar heating if it is used by some blowers or fan we are calling it as active solar heating and if the heating is enough for the given building then what we are doing is we are using this insulating covers on the glasses or we are going to use some curtains or some other covering the surfaces so that no radiations will fall through these windows so that whatever the heat is absorbed by this home or the hall is there so that will be maintained for a long time and in the night time so complete covering of these glasses will be done so that no cold air can pass through these windows and the uh, heat of this 
air can be maintained for a given long time. Because this diagram will cover our active as well as passive system with fan, without fan, or with blower, without blower, with pump, without pump of water circulation. So many types of the examples can be studied in this sketch. So here in this you can see the active type where we are pumping the water. So here this water is not used for the water heating and uh, hot water applications. This hot water is going to be circulated through the radiators, okay, or the uh, metallic uh, passages, different uh, passages like plate passages or the uh, pin fin passages. And through this, air is going to be heated inside the building. And this building should be covered with completely insulated walls. And once the air is heated inside the building, then later this water can be utilized for the other applications. And if cooling is required, then you can open the windows at the north side or the south side, whether the air flow is maximum, you can open those windows and you can control the temperature of the room. This is the active type where the pump is connected there to pump the water towards the flat bed collector. So these are the different examples again. Active space heating by liquid flatbed collector. So, in this uh, space heating, you can uh, remember any one example and you can uh, write it. These are all the space heating. So, here in the space heating, we are using the solar air heaters. So, there is no liquid involved here. Only air is heated up and taken back to the storage tank. Okay. So, storage tank may be having some. Uh, rocks or pebbles or some liquid storage like oil and other things and then from that storage device or the thermal battery we are going to uh, supply this room air with a blower and as the blower is used here we are calling it as active space heating solar system so this is one more type where the walls are designed as it is but at the top of the wall, one opening is kept with a blower. So again, this becomes an active system. Now the special case of this type of wall is, it is an unglazed transparent collector. Means the wall side, if you see, whatever the dash line is there, it is not a glass. It is made up of some metal or some uh, uh, concrete structure with some passages in between. So some homes you might have seen in front of wall or window, some uh, Concrete structures will be there or like a layer form will be there in between passages the air will be passing and the hot or the heat collected by this unglazed surface or the metal surface or the wall a concrete wall which is a painted black or some uh, dark color so that hot air will be passing through the upside of the wall and through blower or directly natural convection we can uh, try to distribute in the living space. So these are the different active and passive systems. So UTC, the meaning is unglazed transfer, transferred collectors. See the example what you have taken in this notes. So for example here, in the notes I have taken this example. So this is the wall here. In the wall itself, we have two passages, one and two at the top. And this front side, we have covered with a glass. So many buildings nowadays, you might have seen, the glasses are covered. So here, the glasses are covered not to increase the temperature of the building. Correct? Those are the tinted glasses for the reducing the temperature in space. Because here in our localities, we have high temperature air. So this is different application. So coming back to this one, this wall is called as Trombe wall. The researcher behind this wall 
to be constructed by ed uh, name is tombe so here you can see there are four passages for a given building passage ab is for the concrete wall or the we can call it a storage tank which stores the heat so there are two passages ab a is for hot air to come inside b is for the cold air to move outside so only in the cold conditions you can think about this and c is for air to go outside because it is at the top side you can think of whenever the building is to be cooled what you can do we can take the cold air from the uh, outside atmosphere so at d side north side we can prepare some shading or some cooling uh, requirements like uh, plantation and other things so from that cold condition the cold air can be passed through the d and we can open only b or a any one passage and it can pass through the building through c so like this one passage can be prepared in summer to cool the building to heat the building what you can do this c and d should be closed for heating the building now what will happen as we remember in winter and the cold conditions this entire building is in low temperature so this glass will transfer the solar radiations and radiations will be falling on this storage wall or the concrete wall and this will store the heat and also in between this glazed surface and the storage wall the heating of the air is going to take place in this surface or in this passage continuous heating will be taking place and cold air whatever is there in the room it will be passing through this b and heating up once it heats heats up it will flow through the passage a because c will be closed in winter or in cold conditions through air air will be hot air will be passing through the passage and it will come to the cooling space or the room and d is also closed here in the winter conditions so when only ab is open cold air will be going out at the bottom side because of high density and hot air will be coming inside at passage a so like this circulation of the air will be there which is increasing the temperature and in the nights of cold conditions we have to close all the windows or all the passages then what will happen what are the energy stored in the building walls that energy will be heating or radiating or extracting the heat to the air and it will be keeping the warm climate inside the space is that clear and in different conditions what will happen this facing of the building should be different because if you take uh, northern hemisphere or the part of the southern hemisphere many times the building facing towards south should be maintained for the solar radiations to enter the building and for the northern hemispheres or the below uh, northern hemispheres the building should be facing towards the north because the more heating is taking place towards the equator the building should be facing towards equator and because of the tilt factor even in the southern hemisphere some of the areas okay on that areas we have to tilt the surfaces or the facing of the building should be done towards south if the, the heating is required so as majority of the countries are having more inclination or the declination angle so because of that this building is facing towards south and towards north if you see some shading and cooling is done so trombe wall application all of you understood okay next class we'll take another uh, different self study topics i will uh, discuss briefly then we'll go for the uh, correlations and the empirical relations of this uh, flat rate collector okay we we'll stop the class here i uh, will continue in uh, monday sir monday class is not there tuesday will continue